Welcome to our health presentation where we will be looking at the current COVID-19 vaccines. My name is Brian McCoon. I'm a medical doctor and I've been working in the public healthcare system in an emergency department. So my training and experience is in emergency medicine. That is the first doctor you will meet in any emergency is someone like me, whether it's an adult emergency, a pediatric emergency, a maternity emergency, even trauma. And even with this current scenario, with COVID-19 symptoms, we are the doctors that you will meet and we will be here to assess and to help you. So as we look into our discussion on the COVID-19 vaccines, there are a few questions that we would like to answer. So the first one, what is immunity? Then we'd want to know what is a vaccine and what are the types of vaccines available and the types of technology used to make them. And then we'd look specifically at what was used to make our COVID-19 vaccines. So let's look at our first question. What is immunity? So the immunity is the ability of the body to defend itself against disease-causing organisms. So immunity is when a, an organism enters our body and triggers that response where we defend ourselves. So there are different types of immunity. So the first type of immunity is something called innate immunity. Next one is adaptive immunity. And the last one is passive immunity. So we'd look at each of these to give us a better understanding of what immunity is and then help us to understand what vaccines do for us. So innate immunity, this is our physical barriers, our skin, our mucous membranes. This is the first line of defense, our physical barriers to prevent anything from entering into our bodies. Then there's adaptive immunity. Adaptive immunity can be active, and this is where it can be natural immunity, where we have exposure to an infection. So if you get a cold, a virus, a bacterial infection, your body responds naturally and you have natural immunity. There can also be artificial immunity, and this is where something is introduced in your body to trigger an immune response. And this is what vaccines do. Then we have passive immunity. Passive immunity is where you actually receive the antibodies. And this happens to babies when they feed on breast milk. They receive antibodies from the mother so that they are immediately protected. And then there are immunoglobulins. This is if someone falls ill and they need antibodies immediately. So immediately we see a difference between active immunity and passive immunity. In active immunity, your body makes the antibodies and the antibodies remain with you for life. Whereas with passive immunity, you receive antibodies, you get immediate protection, but those antibodies do not remain with you for life. So then what is a vaccine? So a vaccine is a product that stimulates an immune response. So a vaccine triggers your defense system to produce immune response and this is in the form of antibodies to fight off whatever bacteria or virus may be present. So there are different types of vaccines and we look at the different technologies and examples of vaccines and then see which ones are being used to make our COVID-19 vaccines today. So we have the inactivated type of vaccine. This is where the germ is actually killed. The virus or bacterial particle is killed. It is not alive, it is not active. And examples of these types of vaccines were the polio, the flu, and hepatitis A vaccines. And in our current COVID-19 vaccine manufacturing scenario, the Sinopharm vaccine uses this technology. Then there's a viral vector technology. This is where the gene for the COVID-19 virus is inserted into um, a weakened or attenuated or killed cold virus. For example, an adenovirus that will not cause any severe symptoms. Examples of viruses or vaccines that use this technology were used for Zika and Ebola. 
and the current COVID-19 vaccines that use this technology are the AstraZeneca and the Johnson & Johnson vaccines. Then there's a new mRNA technology. This is where the actual genetic instruction for spike proteins are inserted into a carrier molecule and then this is injected into the body. And examples of this are the Pfizer and the Moderna vaccines. Then there's a subunit vaccine. This is where part of the virus or bacteria is used and this is used to attach the carrier molecule and this triggers an immune response. Examples where we have used this technology before is the hepatitis B vaccine and the pertussis vaccine. This is part of the DPT that children normally experience. And the COVID-19 vaccine that uses this, this technology is a Novanax technology. Then there's other vaccines, the live attenuated vaccines. These are vaccines that are actual virus and bacterial particles that are just weakened. And examples of this are the MMR and chickenpox vaccines. This, however, is not used in any of our COVID-19 vaccine manufacturing. And then there are two other examples, conjugate vaccines and toxoid vaccines. Conjugate vaccines are just vaccines that have a coat that disguises the spike protein and causes an immune response. Toxoid vaccines are used for bacteria that produce toxins. An example of this one is the tetanus vaccine. So these two last technologies are not currently used for any of our COVID-19 vaccines, but they are vaccines that are used otherwise. And so we just have a pictorial demonstration of exactly the technologies used for the COVID-19 vaccines now. So we know the one that everyone is talking about, the genetic ones, the mRNA. And this is basically using the mRNA which gives the instruction to produce the spike protein which the body recognizes and produces antibodies to. Then there's a viral vector vaccine, again where the genetic material is in a carrier virus that does not cause any serious illness and then that is used they insert that genetic material to create an immune response. And the example of this again is the AstraZeneca uh, vaccine. Then the subunit ones where they are just the surface proteins, they are just encapsulated in a carrier molecule and used to trigger an immune response. The example of this again is a Novanax vaccine. And then we have the weakened or inactivated forms and this is where the virus is actually inactivated, killed, weakened, so it does not cause any symptoms or cause active disease. And this releases the genetic material to produce an immune response. An example of this is the Sinopharm vaccine. So these are the four main technologies used in the manufacture of the COVID-19 vaccines. And this table just shows us the different types of vaccines again, the technology used, who can use it, and then if there are any other types of vaccines that use this technology. So you see definitely the viral vector, the example being the AstraZeneca, and that has been used before to produce Evo Ebola vaccines. We have the whole virus technology, which is being used by Sinopharm, and previous vaccines that use this technology was the whooping cough, rabies, hepatitis A, even the HPB, HPV vaccine use this technology. And then the protein subunit, the example of this is a Novanax, and the previous type of vaccines using this technology is a hepatitis B. So we see most of the technology used for COVID-19 vaccines already exist and have been used, and we have been using vaccines using these technologies. So this just shows exactly what happens. So with a viral vector, it uses a harmless virus which contains part of the genetic material and that is injected into the body. With the RNA one, that same thing where the messenger RNA is in a carrier molecule and that is injected into the body. The mRNA is released into the cytoplasm or the fluid in the cell, gives the instruction to create the antigen or spike protein that is recognized by the body, 
creates antibodies. And as that is done, as the instruction is used, the mRNA disintegrates in the cytoplasm. So it doesn't go further than that liquid in the cell. And the whole virus, which is the inactivated version, that again introduces the genetic material to trigger an immune response. And the subunit again, these are just the spike proteins or fragments of the virus that the body recognizes to create a response. So these are the two vaccines available in Trinidad and Tobago, the Oxford AstraZeneca and the Sinopharm. And we see the difference between them is that one uses a vector, the AstraZeneca uses a vector, whereas the Sinopharm is actually the inactivated form of the virus, but both of them achieve the same purpose for introducing the genetic, genetic material for the body to recognize so that the body now can mount a response, create antibodies, so the next time the body sees something similar like this, you already have the ability to recognize and create antibodies in a rapid way. And we also see the efficacy of both of them almost similar, AstraZeneca being about 82% and the Sinopharm being about 79%. So the question is, are vaccines safe? So we know for sure, based on the technology that is being used, no live coronavirus is used. And it does not cause COVID-19. So the, va the vaccines are strong enough to create a response, but not strong enough to cause the disease. And especially with the RNA vaccines, the genetic material does not enter the nucleus and the mRNA does not interfere with your body's own DNA. And just a matter of safety, vaccines, how are they produced? So first there's a preclinical where the, the, the idea is taught about what do we need to use for a vaccine. Then it is tested in phase one, phase two, phase three clinical trials. And we hear a lot about this, you know, phase one is just a few people to just test to see what response is given. Phase two, hundreds of people to look at the type of response and who gets immunity. Phase three, thousands of people to look at the same thing plus a side effect profile. However, the usual time to develop a vaccine or a drug for use takes up to 10 years. But the question we need to ask ourselves in this deadly pandemic, how long are we willing to wait to get a vaccine following the traditional pathways? And so what happened during the manufacture of the COVID-19 vaccines is that these phases were conducted simultaneously so that in a short space of time, we were able to get an effective series of vaccines. And so these are the most widely used vaccines in the world today the Pfizer, the AstraZeneca, the Moderna, and the Sinopharm. So around the world, these are the most common vaccines that are used, and these are ones that are WHO approved. So what can you expect when you get vaccinated? So when you get that stick in your arm, there might be some redness at the injection site. If there might be some soreness, muscle aches, joint pains, fatigue, you might mount a fever and have a headache. And this could last from a few hours to three days on average. And in rare instances, allergic reactions can take place. An allergic reaction might be to an ingredient in a vaccine. And the features of this would be itching, bumps coming up on your skin, and problems to breathe. That is why the international guideline, which is practiced in Trinidad and Tobago, after you get the vaccine, you are monitored for at least half an hour to make sure no allergic responses take place before it is safe for you to return home. So, to summarize for our COVID-19 vaccines, they are safe. And the SDA Church promotes responsible vaccination. However, it also respects individual choice to be vaccinated or not to be vaccinated. However, when we are vaccinated, we receive our personal immunity where we receive protection from either getting the disease 
or if we do get it from it being severe. And if that happens, we also offer protection to others who may not be able to get the vaccine or who may not have been vaccinated. Because when we are vaccinated, it reduces our risk of spreading the disease. And so, as we have considered the different types of technologies and COVID-19 vaccines available, we're encouraged to be safe, be responsible, and save lives.